another episode of the Verde Valley Experience. I'm your host, Jennifer Cohen, and we've got a wonderfully informative lineup for you today on the show, as always, on the Verde Valley Experience. On today's show, we'll get a visit from the National Night Out Coordinator, Jim Iacovacci, and Cottonwood Police Chief Jody Fanning will also be here with us. This is a good visit, trust me, <laughs> in the studio, and they'll be talking about National Night Out, which is coming up on August 5th. Robin Prudhomme Bauer, the president of the League of Women Voters of Arizona, is going to be here to remind us that democracy is not a spectator sport. She'll be providing us with early voting information and information on independent voting in the upcoming elections. Helen Stevenson, the executive director of the Prescott Film Festival, is going to fill us in on all the new and exciting things that will be happening for the first time this year at the festival, which is coming up July. July 23rd and 27th. Also in the studio we'll have Lori Simmons. She's the president of the Red Dot Booster Club. Now the Red Dot is an organization that supports the Mingus Marauders football team. So Lori will be here to tell us all about the club and how you can get involved. <laughs> we'll take a break from the summer heat and head down to Page Springs Hatchery where we'll catch up with hatchery manager Wade Zarlingo and we'll fish details out of him about the hatchery and all the good that they do for our fish population and our local waters here. And we'll be finishing up our show today with singer, songwriter, musician Ashley Kay. This delightful young lady is going to share a few songs with us live here in the studio, one of which is an original so you can say that you heard it first on the Verde Valley Experience. So stick around, we've got lots of good stuff for you so let's go ahead and get started. I have with me in the studio now. Da, 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 da. Drum roll. <laughs> we don't have that on cue, do we? <laughs> I have Jim Yakavachi, the um, National Night Out Coordinator. Thank you. And Thank you. the Cottonwood Police Chief Jody Fanning. Thank you so much, Chief Thank Fanning, you. for being here. Thank you, Jim. I really appreciate you guys being Pleasure. here. This is uh, an amazing event which I knew nothing about. I'll be honest, where, where my head was is I thought it was where you got to drop your kids off in a safe place and they would learn cool things and the parents got to go out. <laughs> I'm a parent of a young child and a night out. Uh, that's kind of where I was going with that. So when I did research on this, I was really impressed to see what you guys are doing. Can you go ahead and, and tell us a little bit more and enlighten us about what National Night Out is? Well, I think uh, I'm going to defer to Jim because he is he is my coordinator, and so I'm going to let him start the ball with this. Sure. Um, National Night Out has been around, this is the 31st year now mm -hmm. for National Night Out. It's a nationwide and now in 14 other countries, um, an event that goes on the first Tuesday of every August, every year, and it's a chance for police agencies to get out in the community and partner with the community to help learn about crime and um, get kids and families um, all together in one place um, and heightening the crime efforts amongst everybody. It's crime solving is not just police, it's everybody, um, including it. And National Night Out is one event that police agencies all around the world are participating in every year. Right. I was amazed to see that it's it's in all different countries and it's even in, you know, besides all the cities in the United States are taking part of it. We also have Canada. We have the U.S. territories. Uh, that's an amazing thing to have to coordinate that all on the same night every year. What, what an amazing dent that must put in crime awareness. Yes, it does. It is also, it gives us the police officers a great opportunity and the citizens a great opportunity to meet the police officers one-on-one -on -one in a much easier, much calmer atmosphere. The police officers are walking around, talking to people, meeting people. They get to, the little kids get to see us in a different light. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great time and it's a lot of work to coordinate it all. Um, Jim starts typically around December, January is when we start the coordinating for the ne next year. Um, and then it ramps up around May and things really get hopping in May. Wow, that's, that's definitely a lot of work on your part, Jim. Thank you for all you do. You're welcome. I'm Can you walk us through how the evening progresses? <laughs> sure. The um, event starts at 530 every year and um, all the different organizations and businesses who are setting up displays have donated food and different vendors from ice cream to cotton candy all have to be set up around 5, 515. And there's a lot of Verde Valley organizations that come out to promote child safety, child awareness. Some organizations give away school supplies, mm -hmm. some give away, um, there's a dental association that's giving away toothbrushes and stuff like that. So it's just a variety of what gives out um, for children and for families. Um, but then at 530 it starts out and the people are there and they just keep on coming. And about six 
um, 6.30, um, the chief will get up and make some announcements. And every year we try to give out two awards um, to um, individuals and um, organizations in the Verde Valley mm -hmm. who have helped out National Night Out for a long time because a lot of the businesses have donated to National Night Out for a lot longer than I've been part of it here in Cottonwood. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think it's important to recognize them in our community here in Cottonwood. Uh, but then um, the uh, Cottonwood Police um, SWAT team comes out and um, does a demonstration, which is always oh, the, cool. the high event of the <laughs> night. And um, but Taekwondo um, here in Cottonwood, they come out and do um, demonstrations for kids of self-defense and different events. So there's a lot going on, mm. and the whole thing wraps up about eight o'clock at night. All right, that's great. The SWAT team's demonstration again this year will be um, demonstrating their capabilities. We'll have the M wrap out, which is the our newest um, piece of equipment, which a lot of the little kids have got to see from the kindergartners and the elementary kids, but a lot of the adults haven't got to see it, and it'll be there um, on display for everybody to see. We'll also have a canine demonstration where mm. the canine, um, the bite dog, will. Um, we'll have somebody volunteer to run. The bite from the, dog. <laughs> we'll have somebody volunteer to run from the dog. Um, oh my! Which he will lose, um, <laughs> and he knows he's going to lose, or she knows she's going to lose. And the bite dog will the dog will take the, the um, person down and then follow the commands of the handler. Um, and then we'll have a taser demonstration. Somebody. No. We'll volunteer really? for that again, <laughs> and oh they get they get a um, taser experience, which Ooh. they typically don't want to. Um, mm. But it's just all, it's all to show the, the people of our community what our police force is capable of, the training, the equipment that we have to help them feel safe in their communities, and just to understand a little bit more about, you know, we're not what you see on TV, we're, we're your neighbors, we're your kids, our kids went to school with your kids, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, so. Well, that's great. It's kind of a community welcoming mingling of exactly. both sides so that you can that it's not we, so scary. When we had a lot of block watches run in Cottonwood that was that's where a lot of our block watches would meet the block mm. watch groups would meet at the National Night Out to introduce themselves to each other so that they could coordinate with that throughout. Um, our block watches are not as strong in Cottonwood anymore mostly because block watches come from need and right now there's not a lot of needs in a lot of neighborhoods for block watches because things are going well so that's a good thing yes yeah that yes, means you guys are doing a great job yes thank I you so, so much thank you <laughs> so it's happening from 5 30 to 8 p.m on tuesday august 5th and that's at the cottonwood children's park which is uh, 12th and cherry yes that's correct that's uh, amazing and you said food and you have so many sponsors dogs. yep it's one of the one of the nice things of ours is because of the generosity of the community and business organizations mm -hmm. ours is totally free mm -hmm. there's no cost to anybody to get in through the gates and to receive receive a lot of the gifts and prizes and a lot of different things that organizations give out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I try to stress of uh, back to school and safety things. We have bike helmets, um, school notepads, pencils. I mean, there's there's just a, a lot of organizations that have really stepped up this year and we're expecting well over 1,500 people wow. um, this year. So it's growing every year. That's amazing, that's amazing. Typically, we're one of the largest in Northern Arizona, north really? of Phoenix. Um, we're one of the largest. Wow, that's great. And this is the 31st annual. Yes. yes. That's really great. And you've been to 30 of them, I think you said, Jim. 30 of them in 31 <laughs> years, yes. That's amazing. Yeah. You started when you were 12. That's right. Right. <laughs> Thank you. But yes, it was, um, it's a, in all the years of police work, it's one, um, one event a year that I really enjoyed from day one that it started and really committed myself throughout my whole career and then after I retired um, moving to Cottonwood from Flint, Michigan mm -hmm. um, I decided to continue that and work with the Cottonwood Police and Chief Fanning with National Night Out. Right. Well great. Well yeah. thank you Jim for all the work you're doing. Thank, well, thank you, you Chief Fanning. Thank Appreciate you. everything you're doing for this. Make sure you guys get out to National Night Out. 5.30 to 8, August 5th at Cottonwood Children's Park. Make sure you're there. There's going to be lots of great stuff for you to see and do and all kinds of wonderful things. That I just, I can't wait to see the bike dog. That's all I can think about right now. <laughs> and who? Oh, the poor guy who's got to get tasered. See, you got to go just for that, if nothing yeah, else. <laughs> so stick with us at the Verde Valley Experience because we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. There are now more registered voters in Arizona who say that they are independent than those who claim a particular party. If that's you, independents can vote in the primary elections after they select a party ballot. You fill it out and mail it back. 
If you vote at your polling place on election day, they will ask which ballot you'd like. Even though you're not a registered party member, your right to vote is protected and your vote will count. A message from the League of Women Voters of Arizona. When the city lights fade, our lights get brighter. When your night needs life, ours comes alive. When you want to do something different, we say, come out and play. Come experience the new Mountain Springs Buffet. All you can eat starting at just $7. The Cliff Castle Casino Hotel voted number one casino in Arizona 15 years in a row. So, I just moved in with this family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. And welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. My next guest is Robin Prudhomme Bauer, who is the president of the League of Women Voters of Arizona. Thank you for being here, Robin. Thank you for having me today. What, a, <laughs> what an amazing organization you have. Thank you. Yes, it is. You know, it's 94 years old. Wow. Yes. 1920 is when the women got the right to vote, and that's when our organization became the League of Women Voters. Really? So, yes. Wow, right off the bat, fascinating piece of information for you. <laughs> I did not know that. That's great. Thank wow, you. Wow, and you guys have an awesome website. You've got to check out their website. It's lwvaz.org, as in League of Women Voters of Arizona. Org. Amazing. So much information. Anything you ever wanted to know about voting or the process or getting involved, it's an amazing organization to be getting involved with. Yes, it is. It is. It's a great community organization. And and as you as you know, right now is election season for us. And mm -hmm. so we're really busy all over the state. Right. Um, leagues are holding uh, community forums, candidate forums um, for people running for elected office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it keeps us really busy this yeah, time of year. I so. bet you're constantly running. Thank yes. you for being on the show. Well, thank you. I appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. So I know we're going to talk a little bit about early voting. What can mm -hmm. you tell us about early voting? Well, um, let's sort of talk about, you know, the primary election is coming up on August 26th. Um, the last day you get to register to vote is July 28th. So that's right around the corner. Right. And then right after that, beginning the week of July 31st, ballots for those who uh, are permanent early voters, mm -hmm. those who can't make it to the polls on election day, they will get ballots in the mail and they can start voting uh, for all those on uh, the ballots. Right. So they, right. you know, they get about a month to do that. Sure, so. sure. Now, can anyone be an early voter? Or do you have to be have some sort of something that keeps you out of the polling places? You anybody can be an, an early voter. You right. just have to request that you be put on the early voting mm -hmm. um, list for the county, and um, that means a call to the county elections department, mm -hmm. and I think the last day to request early ballots, I think, is August 15th, if I remember correctly. So. Right. That's great. And another thing that we wanted to touch on was independent voting. Oh, yes. So tell yes. us about that. That's probably one of the most important for this primary election. In, the, in January, a poll was taken in Arizona that asked independent voters if they knew that they could vote in the primary election. And the more than the majority, probably over 75% of them said they didn't know that they had a right to vote in the primary mm. election. Because primary elections are party elections. Mm -hmm. Therefore, those running against each other in the Republican or Democratic Party or uh, Libertarian Party. Mm -hmm. And yes, they can. They can actually vote in the primary election. All they have to do, it's very simple. You either, if you're an early voter, you request that uh, the ballot that you want, you choose which party you want to vote in, uh, and you request that ballot. Or when you go to the polls on election day, you just say to the poll worker, I want the ballot for whichever party you want to vote for. Hmm. And w what we hope is that independents 
do find, know that they do have a right to vote, they need to vote, because often like uh, our elections in many of our districts across the state are determined at the primary mm -hmm. and not at the general, because they might, they might not have anybody running against them in the general elections. Right. Well, that's very good news to know. That's, yes. There you yes. go. So, <laughs> well, and independents are the largest voting yes. group in the state of Arizona. That is it's true. Something like 35 percent of all registered voters are independents. Right. Those are non-preference, you know, right. people. So. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and and regardless of your preference, it's very important to get out and vote. Very, <laughs> yes, very important. Yes, it is absolutely. <laughs> and get involved. You know, I'm I'm receiving all these wonderful phone calls from wonderful people and all these different parties encouraging me to vote or to help with this or help with that. But uh, of an organization like yours is something that really needs our attention and really if, if we have some place we want to volunteer for. That would be fabulous voters. because it's not just around elections that we're busy. Mm -hmm. uh, we get involved in many issues at the state and local level. Uh, statewide, we've been in voting rights issues, uh, election system reform issues. They don't sound a whole lot you know, sexy, but they really are <laughs> exciting because those, those to me are like the basis of our, our well, democratic sure. uh, yeah. democracy here. So, um, and, and locally will be in issues around water, land mm -hmm. use, yeah. and things like that where, you know, communities need to come together and uh, we often will facilitate community forums to help the discussion move forward to right. hopefully some good outcome. Right. Yeah. I mean, your mission statement is being a voice for citizens and a force for change. Thank you. Yes, it is. That's great. <laughs> That's very important. The voice for the citizens. Yes, so you want to get involved. Trust me. <laughs> you want your voice to be heard if you like me. That's good. Though. When we get done, I'll ask the crew to be a member of our organization. <laughs> I had my daughter in a stroller in a March when she was about one years old and oh she was my. holding a little sign in her stroller and waving her little sign and that's one of my most treasured pictures. I, I got my daughter involved in the political system very early, getting her out there to speak her voice yeah. and I just I, hope You know, that people say, you know, their vote doesn't count. They don't oh, believe their vote right. counts, but it does count Absolutely. and it's very important because if you care about, let's say, the recreation center in your community mm -hmm. or whether a library is going to be open or whether the streets are going to get fixed. Right. That requires that you have people that you have voted for yes. be your representative in making the decision on what happens in your community. Right. And so it is very much as important that people vote. People of all ages from 18 and above should register and vote. It's mm -hmm. easy to do in the state of Arizona. Yes, yes. And with the early voting ballot that you get in the mail, it, it couldn't be any easier. It comes oh, to you. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah mail-in ballots mean that you could do it in your leisure. Right, you in know, your pajamas. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But on Election Day in Yavapai County, they've made it very easy because we have what we call voting centers now. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter where you are in the county on Election Day. If you see a place that you can vote, you can just walk in and vote there. So really? if I'm in Prescott, rather than in Clarkdale where I live, right. I can go to a voting center in Prescott really? and vote that day, yes. Oh, that's yes. super important yes. news. Yeah, that's very, and it's very easy. So yeah. it's like you have no excuses. Right, well, there you go, you have no excuse. No excuse to not vote. I don't come tell me you didn't vote. That's right, that's wow. right. Wow, well right. thank you for making it so You're easy. Welcome. I appreciate that. Thank much. you for all that you do. And if you wanna get involved, you can uh, check them out at the League of Women Voters of the Verde Valley dot com, but you're going to abbreviate that L W V V E Verde Valley dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Great website. Get involved. Get out there. Rock the vote, as they say. I like Make that. democracy work. Thank you, Robin. I really appreciate you being Thank here. Thank you very much for awesome. having me here today. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank and you. And we'll be right back with lots more of the show. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Sarina. It's almost election time again. Voting is a very important part of making a democracy work. Like many of you, I've signed up to receive an early ballot by mail each election. But because it comes weeks before the election, it's easy to just put it aside and forget it. But keep it handy as you learn about the candidates and issues. When you're done voting, the rest is simple. Just put the ballot in the white envelope and sign it. Then put that envelope in the larger yellow envelope. Just seal it and drop it in any mailbox. 
A message from the League of Women Voters of Arizona. When the city lights fade, our lights get brighter. When your night needs life, ours comes alive. When you want to do something different, we say, come out and play. Come experience the new Mountain Springs Buffet. All you can eat starting at just $7. The Cliff Castle Casino Hotel, voted number one casino in Arizona 15 years in a row. Good one, son. Last summer, my new dad took me on vacation. <laughs> First, we went deep sea fishing. Wow! I'm so proud of you, son. <laughs> and then we went on Thunder Shark. That was awesome! Let's go again! Three times. <laughs> I gotta say, it was pretty cool. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Oh, not again. Welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. My next guest is Lori Simmons, and she is the president of Red Dot Booster Club. Lori, thank you so much for being here. You bet. Thanks for having me. Sure. What an exciting club you have. Oh, it's wonderful. Talk about harnessing enthusiasm. It is. And that's <laughs> not hard because as sports parents, of course, we're very enthusiastic. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, well, let's start out. Talk about a little bit of your background and how mm -hmm. long you've been involved in the Red Dot Booster Club. You bet. Well, we moved to Cottonwood about 19 years ago. Mm -hmm. I come from a sports family, and my husband's a coach, and so we were very interested in Mingus wow. football. They won a state championship, which really aroused the whole town. We were mm -hmm. very excited about that. So as my first son entered Mingus, he happened to be the quarterback, and so it was a natural fit that right. I get involved with the booster club. And uh, by the time my third son finishes the program, I will have part, been part of Red Dot for 12 years. Wow. It's fun. I love it. It's so fun to, to be out there and support these kids mm -hmm. who really work their tails off. Um, yeah for no our kidding. community and then when you see on Friday nights under those Friday night yeah. lights how the community comes together it's wonderful yeah that is wonderful and it's made possible by the Red Dot Booster Club we have to be honest you guys mm -hmm. with your fundraising efforts and your volunteerism mm -hmm. really get out there and support the Mingus Marauders and I, I can't be done without you so that's true you. and so I think one of the things we really want to get out there mm -hmm. is that um, you don't have to have a child in the program to participate mm -hmm. um, you could be a grandparent or a neighbor or just a sports enthusiast. You don't have to know anything about football, mm -hmm. but if you love to support children, there's such a need right now. Yeah. Um, there's needs everywhere for volunteers, but for some people, this is an easy one. You just come down on a Friday night and we may have you popping some popcorn or taking tickets at the door, maybe selling t-shirts, but mm -hmm. really being around that community feeling, it feels good, it's great to support the children. And there's so many ways. I mean, we start our fundraising in probably February. Mm -hmm. um, we like to have most everything done by the time the season and starts because we're parents we want right. to watch our children play um, but that's where some of the other volunteers step in then so I can be in the stands being the crazy football mom and then we have maybe some retirees running the snack shack or selling mm -hmm. the t-shirts so anywhere that people want to get involved if they just contact us contact the high school the red mm -hmm. dot club we will make sure and, and get them involved yeah. How many volunteers do you need on one of those Friday nights? I would say we probably run with about 15 volunteers mm -hmm. for every varsity game. Mm -hmm. It's probably five to seven for every freshman and JV game because mm -hmm. we support those as well. Right. Um, but all year long, we do things like right now we're raising money for our football program. Mm -hmm. Businesses around town advertise in that program. And we can use 20, 30, 40 volunteers there to go talk right. to our local businesses who are incredibly generous. Mm -hmm. um, in previous years, we've been able to raise up to thirty thousand dollars so the nice. school doesn't have to pitch in to keep our programs running to keep new helmets safe mm -hmm. shoulder pads concussion awareness all these things are so important but funding keeps getting cut in Arizona right so as long as Red Dot is around and our volunteers are around to help us we're gonna be able to continue this wonderful program for our kids yeah, that's great I mean some folks may not realize how many hundreds of dollars mm -hmm. it costs for a kid to play football between the the equipment and mm -hmm. the safety and just the, the the bus driving here driving there for all that mm -hmm. stuff that's got to come from somewhere and, and the schools just can't make it happen so that's the red true. dot booster club that is your 
primary action of supporting those guys. It is. We estimate around four or $500 a year mm -hmm. per athlete. There's years we have up to 90 children in the program wow. between freshman through senior. Some years are a little smaller than that, but wow. um, it's our goal to make sure that these children are safe and that they have some fun things too. There's, yeah. there's just so, there's history of t-shirts and there's mm -hmm. history behind we like to serve pizza after the away games and Great. those are things I think some of the athletes take for granted because they've never known anything else right. but for those of us that work so hard for it we know how neat it is Saturday morning right. breakfast that's a fun thing the oh, dads nice. get together really? and they cook well and it's not just dads again it could be uncles or neighbors or whoever but it happens to be all the men um, prior to films on Saturday morning the boys are sore and they're tired yeah. and the coaches are exhausted but the dads get there at 6 a.m. and they cook a huge breakfast for the boys Really? Um, after they've cleaned the stands, uh, the boys come over and they get served breakfast. It's just a wonderful tradition wow. and it costs a lot of money. We go through 18 dozen eggs, yeah. nine gallons of milk, wow. and on and on and on. <laughs> and that's one of the fun things that Red Dot Club does. How fun is that for the dads to it's go and make wonderful. breakfast for the boys? It's That's neat. great. It's well, neat. you've got an event coming up called Guns and Hoses, which I love. We Please tell do. us about that. We do. So we just have had such generous support from the firemen and the police officers in the entire Verde Valley. They come together and play a flag football game. This year it's going to be on Friday night, August 1st. We're going to start at 6 p.m. And there will be, we will ask for a small donation for people to come to the event. But this flag football game can get pretty competitive I between guess. the guns and the hoses. There's a really large trophy <laughs> at the end, but the families come, the entire community comes out, we'll be running a full snack shack, and then all of that money goes towards the Red Dot Club so we can continue mm. to support our athletes. So we hope everybody comes out. You may not recognize that person without their uniform. Yeah, that's true. But it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Boy, they should have t-shirts saying who they are and, and where they're from so that we can go. Yeah, they they go red and blue. So red, of red, course, are the firemen, obvious. blue are the oh. police officers. The well, that's the you. only way we know them. That's it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that, that's too much fun. Yes, it's wonderful. <laughs> I hope you can make it. I know. That's it. I gotta, I'm writing it in my schedule right now. And that's going to be at Brightfield? It is. It's at Mingus Union High School oh, at, Brightfield, at Brightfield, under the lights. Great. August 1st at 6 p.m. I will see you there. Now, you also do car washes and dinners and mm -hmm. all sorts of things. You're just we busy do. around. We do. So right after school starts, um, one of the activities you will see is the boys will be out selling their Marauder cards. Just about everybody in town has a little Marauder card, and it's for discounts at different businesses around town. One of the major uh. Uh, fundraising sources. That's actually the primary fund we use to buy uniforms. So um, the boys are really rough on the field, and those uniforms yeah. don't last sometimes more than one season. So we use those funds to buy the pads, to buy the new um, equipment for the boys. And after that, um, August 13th is going to be our spaghetti dinner. Mm -hmm. Candy and Vinny Yatsenko from Vinny's donate all of the food. And wow. we serve a meal to the community at the Mingus Cafeteria. And the football players are your servers. Oh. So they wear your uniforms. You'll there will recognize their number. Nice. And you can be asked to be served by the quarterback or by the really? center or whoever oh. it may be, your grandson. And the cheerleaders help out too. Um, nice. They come in that night and they do some desserts for us. So wow. that's really our last fundraising effort because mm -hmm. right after that then we start with our red and gray scrimmage we go into another scrimmage uh, where we actually host a barbecue for right. the away team and their families and the boys all sit together after that rough competition mm -hmm. they break bread together it's just an amazing evening that's good and then it starts we travel up to snowflake it's going to be a tough game for our first wow. game of the year but we're really excited about it the kids have been working i mean they started pretty much march 1st mm -hmm. Seven o'clock in the morning, they showed up for football practice, and yeah. they've been working all summer long. That's great. It is. That's it's great. Fun. Wow. We're proud of them. Yes, absolutely. I, mm -hmm. I do love that about the Verde Valley. We mm -hmm. are very proud mm -hmm. of our Mingus Marauders. So we are. Go Marauders! Absolutely. Thank you, Lori, so Thank much. Thank you so much. I you, appreciate it was you having beautiful. me. Beautiful. Thank you for all that information and, and okay. great stuff that I didn't know, and and I'm sure there's a few things maybe you didn't know. So that was was really really great. And we'll come out and support the Guns and Hoses game. <laughs> Thank you. August first. It's 6 p.m. at Brightfield there at the high school. You see the policeman against the fireman. I, I mean, hey, who wouldn't pay to see that? Absolutely. It's <laughs> very well worth it. Absolutely. And, of course, all the money raised goes to support the Mingus Marauders football team, and that's a good thing. So, yes. Lori, thank you so much for being here. Thank I you. I really appreciate it. You bet. <laughs> Lori Simmons, the president of the Red Dot Booster Club. And we'll be right back with more Verde Valley experience, so don't go away. When the city lights fade, our lights get brighter. When your night needs life, ours comes alive. When you want to do something different, we 
say, come out and play. Come experience the new Mountain Springs Buffet. All you can eat starting at just $7. The Cliff Castle Casino Hotel, voted number one casino in Arizona 15 years in a row. Welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. My next guest is Helen Stevenson. She is the executive director of the Prescott Film Fest, which is coming up July 23rd through the 27th. Helen, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm and delighted to be thank here. Thank you. And it's a wonderful festival you've got coming up full of firsts. Yes, it actually is. We have our first ever 3D film, which mm -hmm. is American Mustangs, uh, screening in Prescott Valley at the Harkins Theater. Wow. Uh, first Celebrities, Ed Asner is coming with Mark Rydell, which right. is really exciting. And our first uh, studio sneak peek of a film, which is One Chance. Hmm. So. Wow, so there's there's a lot going on. And, and it's, it you know, so over so many days and so many films. I mean, how many films will we be showing? 62. 62? <laughs> yes. Wow. Some of those are shorts. So. Well, still, that's yes. a lot to coordinate. It's been a lot. It takes, it's year round, basically. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And then you also um, got a little wine going on in this we one this do. year. We do. We're real excited about the um, AZ Uncorked wine tasting. Mm -hmm. We're doing that in, uh, co sponsored by the Verde Valley Wine Consortium mm -hmm. and also uh, Yavapai College's Viticulture and Enology Program which All is right. a beautiful program. Yes, it is a wonderful, wonderful program. Yes. Wow, so that's movie and, and wine. It is, and then after the uh, wine tasting, one of the wines that we'll be tasting is in the film. That winemaker is really? interviewed in. Um, it's called American Wine Story, mm -hmm. and it's uh, Dos Cabezas mm -hmm. Winery from down in uh, Southern Arizona, Cochise County, mm -hmm. and he will be there. So it'll be a winemaker, filmmaker, wine tasting, and then a documentary afterwards it's called American Wine Story. Wow. That's great. We're just going to know everything there is to know about wine after that, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not. It's more about uh, following your dreams. Mm. The documentary. It's yes, the backdrop is is wine because these people had amazing, successful careers. They're in Silicon Valley and all over the, you know, just fabulous careers, and they just got it into their hearts that they wanted to be winemakers. Mm. So they left everything. And then they started doing this, and, and this is this follows their journeys. Wow, yeah. and, and how awesome for them to be part of the film festival. Yes. That's yes. really great. That really brings it right in. Yes. That's awesome. Well, you've got other things going on, too, because um, you'll be screening films from multiple countries this time, too. Oh, yes. We have uh, films from uh, uh, England and Australia and uh, Africa. Hmm. Uh, Scotland, all over the place. Yes, definitely. Lots wow. of films. That's great. And then there's also the first high school film competition and screening. We are excited about that. Um, Jeff Wood, who teaches at Mingus Union High School in Cottonwood, is our high school film coordinator. And he watched all the films for us and gave us the, the winners, basically, mm -hmm. in order. And he'll be at the film festival and coordinating the students. There'll be students there. And one of the one or two of the films from Mingus Union came uh, is in the festival, wow. and other films from around the state of Arizona. Wow! Yeah. Well, that's really great. Well, one of the seeds of that was Arizona is 40th in the United States of st high school students who continue on to college, mm -hmm. and the film festival is held in association with Yavapai College, mm -hmm. and we're thinking, how do we get? How do we help with that? Some tiny little way. And one of our board members came up with this idea of, let's get these kids on campus in a positive environment. So they're in high school still. They may be freshmen in high school. We, it, we don't care about that. Mm -hmm. But they get to stay in the dorms. They get to see their film up on the big screen. They get to experience uh, workshops and everything else that the regular official selection filmmakers get. So wow. we're hoping we're just planting little seeds of, of advancing education. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. What a, a great process. Yeah, thank That's you. That's wonderful that you thought that through and then are able to make that happen and, and, and how delightful for those kids to be part of that program. They are thrilled. We'll have two of the teachers, Jeff Wood, of course, he, he's, he'll be there. And then uh, Don Brown will be there. And he's from, I think he's from uh, Tucson hmm. or Phoenix High School. So yes, we're excited having the teachers there too. That's great. Yeah. So it's July 23rd through the 27th, and it's the f films are going to be shown at a few different places, but primarily where does most of the action happen? Um, the only films um, that's not on the campus of Yavapai College are the two showings of American Mustang, mm -hmm. and those are going to sell out. We've, mm -hmm. uh, they're almost, oh, yeah. yeah we, that's why we had two screenings, because that's 
Yavapai County is horse country. Yes, so people course. are coming from Tucson even to come right. see this film. Yeah. So uh, that will be at the Harkins in Prescott Valley. All the rest of the films are on the campus of Yavapai College. Uh -huh. They have the beautiful Yavapai College Performing Arts Center, which mm -hmm. uh, seats 1,100 people. It's a beautiful facility. And then also they have a community room, like the Verde campus has a community room. The Prescott campus also does. And the other films will be in there. That's so, great, yeah. and it's a it's a beautiful venue. I tell you, state of the art. Oh, it definitely is. That's yes. great. Did you get your ticket for American Mustang? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the Q and A, so they'll oh, slip me in for free. <laughs> oh, the Q and A. That's what we have about 40 filmmakers coming. Anyway. That's a record for us, and there is there are screening hosts assigned to every film, so it's a little different. If you've never been to a film festival, mm -hmm. you have the, you screen the film, but if the filmmaker's there, you will have a Q and A, and it's your chance to talk to the filmmakers, ask them questions. Wow. In fact, Mark Rydell, we're doing the, um, Ed Asner is coming with Mark Rydell, and they're gonna do a comedy play, but then Mark Rydell is gonna stay. Um, people who aren't into film don't really know who he is, mm -hmm. but he, he's huge. He is one of my uh, visiting filmmakers, called him a cinema god, oh. but he directed John Wayne in The Cowboys. He directed, uh, he directed on Golden Pond, which is Henry Fonda and Jane Fonda. Mm -hmm. He directed a Bette Midler in the Rose. Wow. So he is absolutely huge. So he's going to stay, and Saturday afternoon we're going to do a matinee, a Western matinee. We're going to show John Wayne's The Cowboy, oh. and Ed Asner will be there afterwards, and he will tell you exactly what it was like to work with John Wayne and all those other luminaries in his oh career. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That is fantastic. It's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to that one. Wow. I yes. bet. Yes. That's a... How many films did you say again? 62. 62. Yes. That's amazing. So how does the ticketing go? Can we buy a package? Do, are they individual sales? You can, you can do either way. You can do individual sales. The tickets are $10 each. Mm -hmm. uh, you can buy a movie mogul pass, which would get you into all the movies, not the Ed Asner thing, because that's a live play, mm -hmm. but as many films as you can cram into the day and the workshops. Uh, we also have workshops, which we didn't touch on yet, but the, um, the Platinum Pass is what's the all access pass. Mm -hmm. So we have a VIP director's loft. You go up there and have lunch. Mm. The filmmakers go up there, of course, to have their lunch and mingle and coffee in the morning and all that. And all the after parties, there's after parties every night. Uh, th Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night are after parties. Mm -hmm. So it gets you into those, and that's $340. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's your choice. And you just want to do all movies, or you want to do right. the parties and interact and get little, to know the other filmmakers. Lot. Yeah. Wow. Just, Yes. Rub elbows with really important people. Exactly. Oh, that's really great. <laughs> yes. Wow. Ellen, thank you so much for being with us today and telling us all about the Prescott Film Festival. It's member of July 23rd through the 27th. Go ahead. And uh, they can check out PrescottFilmFestival.com. All the information you're going to need is on PrescottFilmFestival.com. Helen, thank you so much. Thank I'll you. I'll see you there. Excellent. <laughs> and we'll be right back with more Verde Valley Experience, so don't go away. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov.
and welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. Now we're here in beautiful Page Springs, which is an awesome place to go, get a little relief from the desert heat during the summer months. We're down at the Page Springs Fish Hatchery, and I'm here with Wade Zerlingo, who is the Fish Hatchery Manager number two. Thank you so much for having us You're here welcome. today. You're welcome. This is a wonderful spot. I come here all the time with my daughter. The hiking trail is lovely. Um, I found out recently that the Audubon Society has uh, posted you guys as an important birding area. Absolutely. We, we work cool. really close with the Audubon group, uh, wow. especially on trail maintenance, and they're mm -hmm. actually working on a big project right now. Really? On the other side of the creek, which is our warm water facility over there. But we've got uh, quite a few, probably two miles of trail wow. on, uh, combined on both sides of the, the river. That's great. So you can come and, and hang out with the fish and hang out by the river and take a nice little walk, picnic, lunch. There's lots of picnic tables down there. It's a good place to spend the afternoon. But let's talk a little bit about what you guys do here as far as fish production. Sure. Uh, we raise primarily rainbow trout, and we do about 650,000 catchables a year. Wow. And those fish are basically uh, shipped around the state. So we go as far south as uh, Pina Blanca Lake, which is toward Nogales. We go clear to the east, and we actually go clear it over to Yuma wow. for some of our winter stocking. But our primary focus has been the rim lakes up around Flagstaff. Sure. And we put the majority of our, our trout into those waters. Wow. So your job is basically to restock Arizona waters with fishable fish. Absolutely. It's, it's basically a recreational opportunity. Uh, game, game and fish is self-supporting, meaning the license sales supports everything we do. We don't take really? any general fund money. So it's it's really a, a user pay opportunity. And it, it's, huh. it's, it's we start it right here at Page Springs wow. with the hatcheries. So how does it work from beginning to end? Do you have mama fish hanging around laying eggs? Or does it start there? Or? No, it, it doesn't. We, uh, we have a federal, we work with federal hatcheries. They supply us with eggs. Mm -hmm. And then those are grown out at Sterling Springs Hatchery, which is the top of Oak Creek. Mm -hmm. And then they're raised to about uh, about three inches. And then we bring them down here. Okay. And then we'll grow them to nine inches. And then we, we ship those out from, from this facility. Wow. And you said 650,000 a year. 650,000 a year. That's a lot of fish. We That's provide about 68, uh, about 68 percent of the catchable rainbow trout for the state come out of this facility. That's amazing. And it's year-round production. It is, absolutely. The, is there a certain season, or is it you're always in different stages of growth? We're in different stages of growth. So we've got fish that are going out at this time. We've got fish that have just come in. Right. And so basically we move those through the raceways as the, as the fish get bigger mm -hmm. and they need more space. We'll move them from raceway to raceway and thin them out. Right. How do you go about moving the fish from this raceway to the next? Oh, basically we have crowder screens, basically what they're called. You'll get in with waders on, you'll push them up to the front. Mm -hmm. And with the small fish, we'll just weigh them in buckets into the truck to move them down to another raceway. Wow. Uh, once we get uh, to the catchable size, we have actually a fish pump that mm -hmm. we crowd them up and it actually sucks the fish up and then puts them into the tanks for distribution. All right. That's uh that's very cool. They get a truck ride. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> How exciting. Yeah. Now, you have quite a large area. I think I saw that your, your whole property was about 82 acres. It is, yes. And most of it is taken up by fish tanks, it seems. Uh, we've got probably, if I had to guess, about half of mm -hmm. it's in fish culture, if you include warm water and our, our trout culture stuff. Right. And the rest is pretty much open space. We get a lot of recreation, too, along the creek. Sure. And you are allowed to fish on the creek here right behind really? the hatchery. And we stock oh, it here. Really? And it's almost a weekly occurrence. Oh. There are some months where we're not stocking, but for the most part, we stock Oak Creek year round. Really? See, I did not realize that you could come here and actually fish. Absolutely. Like, really? Yeah, you have to. You can't enter from the parking lot at the visitor center or okay. where the main, but there's areas you can actually parking, designated parking area. For fishing? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Well, that's really cool. And your visitor center is gorgeous. Uh, you have a nice set up there with great pictures and great information and, and the tour is self-guided right. and you're open from 7 to 3 30 every single day right absolutely except for christmas and thanksgiving mm -hmm. but other sure. than that we're we're open and right. and there's usually staff around here if there's if there's questions you know uh, right. we, we try and really focus on on user-friendly type of thing just like any business model i guess would of course so uh anyway yeah it's a very unique facility and a beautiful setting so. oh it, absolutely and, and like i said it's it's nice and cool well relatively <laughs> in right. here right now as far as summer goes in the desert so it's a wonderful place to come and spend the afternoon and take a look at the trout all right now besides trout you, your other facilities work with uh what is it bluegill and all kinds of other weird sounding fish well no not right now what we uh the, the other side of the creek mm -hmm. we call it bubbling ponds hatchery mm -hmm. 
And they right now they do all warm water species, uh, mostly native. So they do razorback suckers, uh, roundtail chubs. They also have a few pike minnow on station. Sure. And then we're in the process now of actually going into Florida largemouth bass. Wow. And it's and that's a pretty high demand uh, species for yeah. the state of Arizona. Yeah. People do like to catch those. Right. And sure. so there's going to be. I, I think that's going to be where we move forward to on at least on some of our, our production on the other side. All right. But we also have a lot of endangered uh, snakes. You know, we have the really? we have the northern Mexican garter snake, which is also on site here. Wow. And it's, so it's just such a unique area with our springs and stuff that there's there's other things that we have to uh, watch out for and take care of and That's conserve, true. you know, other than That's just true. our sports fish. You guys so. are stewards of the land. We, we try to be. As we well as uh, helping the recreational sport fishermen get out and actually catch some fish. So right. next time you catch a fish, Anywhere here in Arizona, call Wade. Tell him thank you. Send him a note. <laughs> thank yous are good, but please don't call. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. And we're our phone lines are open all the time. Oh, there we so go. You can definitely give us a call <laughs> if you have any questions. And check out the Arizona Game and Fish Department's website. There's all kinds of really great stuff on there about fishing and, of course, about wildlife, about lots of different things that you want to know. The Arizona Game and Fish Department's website, which is abbreviated AFGD. O-R-G. A-Z-G-F-D A -Z. <laughs> dot gov or dot org. Right. Okay, I almost had it. <laughs> no, close. Wait, thank you so much for joining You're us welcome. today. I really appreciate you letting us in here. Absolutely. And giving us a tour. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Nice then, to meet you. Yeah. And we'll be right back with lots more of the Verde Valley experience, so don't go away. My new mom and I have a lot in common. Ah, oh, the great outside. We both love the outdoors. It's so shiny. That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look. An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. We finally bought a place. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. So at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. How is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Up, college is hard. Down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? Only you can prevent wildfires. And I 
told you to be kind and I told you to be balanced and I told you to be fine and in the morning I'll be with you but it'll be a different kind cause I'll be holding all the tickets and you'll be oh performance <laughs> that was really wonderful thank you that was, there was a lot of power in the little person here <laughs> thanks <laughs> ashley k everyone I, i'm applauding oh my gosh that was amazing where is that song from that's bonnie Vare's skinny love wow yeah that's a great song the wow the lyrics in that are are really heart tugging. Yes, they are. Yeah, I, I actually practiced that song a lot in front of my family, and the first time I did it, they were like, "Can you uh, sing it like without the music so we can just hear the lyrics?" Right. Yeah, <laughs> they're very involved. Yeah. Wow. Ashley, how long have you been singing and playing? Um, ever since I was like super little, since at least four years old. My parents were actually worship leaders on our church's worship team. My right. dad played the drums and sang harmony, Aww. and then my mom sang as well. Nice. Yeah. I, I usually find that the parents are musical. Yeah. That's nice that that gene always gets passed down. <laughs> That's not one you want to have skip. And then you have a wonderful musical theater background. I do actually, yeah. Um, all through high school, all four years, I was actually in theater, um, in musicals, I learned how to tap dance and how just to regular dance and all of that. And, and I love it. I love musical theater so much. Yeah, and it shows. I can see in your performance Thank here you. today that it really shows. And you're so enthusiastic and bubbly. It's Thank so awesome. you. So are you. I go, oh, gosh. And in case you didn't know, this is our Ashley from the Brian and Ashley in the Morning Show. Yes. <laughs> Ashley is part of our morning team here at yeah. Unified Broadcasting. Very and you do a wonderful job at that, too. Thank you very much. There you go. And now that we know if there's ever technical difficulty and the music goes out, you'll just sing. Exactly. Yes. Brian has tried to get up. me to sing so many times. And I have, but not to my like full capacity like this. Oh, yeah, I bet poor Brian, if he had any hair, it was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor guy doesn't have anything going Blown on. Blown right off space, by yeah. that amazing performance. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> now, please tell us about Northern Arizona's Got Talent. Uh, Northern Arizona's Got Talent, I did that earlier, um, I think it was like like a month ago or a couple months ago, and it was amazing to see all of the talent there. You know, um, you think you're expecting one thing, and then everybody just blows you out of the water. Um, it, it was... Actually, my first uh, performance where I was playing piano, and I actually made it to the finals. Congratulations. Thank you. That's an <laughs> and amazing I, I played feat. that song, yeah. Well, there you go. It was a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Congratulations on making it to the finals. Thanks so that much. That is really awesome. So what's the next step for you? The next step. I uh, just to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to continue on the morning show, um, go as far as I can with that. I'm going to continue. I've been trying to write music. And right. so, yeah. And so, um, but the funny thing is, is that I honestly, 
I don't know how to play piano. And let, let me say that. Okay, so here we go. So um, I've been teaching myself. I've only been playing for two years. Mm-hmm. And I've been teaching myself on YouTube how to play certain songs. Oh. And um, so I would love to take like a piano class and really know what I'm doing. I've, I've gotten a great idea of why I do certain things when mm-hmm. it comes to songs and stuff. Um, and I've actually... Yeah, I've I've written a couple songs, well, beginning to songs, and so I just want to finish those. Right, so. that's great. And the next song you're going to be performing is one of your originals. It is, and I'm nervous. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Okay, oh. let's see if <laughs> and I And Ashley Kay, everyone, thank you so much for watching the Verde Valley Experience, and we'll see you next time. <clears throat> Gotta trust in myself and know that I can 